Hey guys, I'm Lenny, and today I'd like to show you a simple game menu um, tutorial, I guess, or just um, I'm gonna show you the code. Um, it's uh, fairly simple, but I felt like uh, showing this to other people as it can make your life easier. All right, um, how this works? First of all, it's in libgdx, so you need uh, specific dependencies to get this uh, going. There's an installer on their site, which I don't really use. I prefer Maven and uh, setting things up uh, manually. So this is the core stuff for uh, libgdx. This one is for pathfinding. That's the AI part here. So um, you also need specific repository setup. That's uh, their GDX nightly repository, and the rest is just irrelevant. Irrelevant. Um, all right, this is uh, Maven setup. Let's see the game setup. Fairly simple, just uh, a title and resolution. And this is the part where you actually create the menu. Um, I have uh, taken this from a simple tutorial on uh, game menus it's just that i have um, combined all the stuff together so i can show you how things work and this thing takes uh, care of all the graphical parts of the menu actually the text button so the buttons you see there the color the size the font for the uh, for the text the color of the text, that's all set up in here in this uh, create basic skin method. You can specify the color here, you can specify what's gonna, well, basically this actually, this enables you to set up different, um, different colors for different actions. So on mouse over, it's light gray, that's this one over. Um, the default is uh, gray, I believe. Down means if you press it, that turns dark gray, and that's pretty much it. Um, here you can specify your own font if you're using one. You can actually load your custom fonts in the like right here when you're loading assets, and then you can just use the font. Um, all right, uh, this just draws the, the stage based on all the buttons and those buttons are based on the basic skin, which is uh, set up right here. Um, buttons are set up, well, I guess I could go for a more abstract way to set this up, but um, let's see, let's grab the first button, that's the create um, the new game button and this is just the position on the screen um, I have specified uh, the, the position is just the top uh, top one the middle one is a load game and these two are like above the middle or below the middle um, the the action listener here is a little bit different than what I was used to. Um, it's called click listener, and um, you just set it up like that. The thing is, if you don't know about the click listener, you're kind of screwed because um, it in, it defaults to uh, event listener, and that pretty much uh, triggers on anything like. Uh, you just move your mouse over the button and so on and so forth, it just uh, triggers every time. So I had to google for that because the implementation I have found uh, didn't work and this is what I have uh, came up with. Luckily uh, you can download sources through dependencies, so if I were to, uh, if I didn't have those sources, I would have a download sources button here and I've already downloaded them so the button is not there but um, 
that enables you to just uh, go into those classes and you can see everything you need so this is what I've been looking for now when I found that I knew that I only need to override that and I can catch that even it's pretty pretty good way to like uh, go through the libraries and see what they do uh, go through the classes all right that's um, pretty much it you can connect this to pretty much anything you want um, for GDX I think a good idea would be to uh, connect it to some sort of a state changer so when you click the start game button you change the state of the game you kind of pause the, the game menu and you start the game and then in the game you can um, set up an action like if you press escape the game state changes again you change to the game menu and pause the game all right that's um, all I wanted to talk about and see you guys next time